welcome back friends uh, we are talking about advanced uh, genetics and we are also talking about uh, the non mendelian inheritance patterns and we have discussed about the incomplete dominance and codominance but now in this video we will be talking about polygenic inheritance polygenic inheritance is also uh, a non mendelian inheritance pattern that mean, that means it is not following the law of gregor mendel now in this case gregor mendel uh, set up different experiments and all the experiments are dealing with only one gene so according to him there is something which he called a factor uh, i emphasize this fact a factor which is responsible for the traits uh, to be traveled from one generation to the next generation which is helping to pass this trait now this factor letter is known as gene is uh, controlling all the traits it's true it's uh, exactly completely true thing but uh, according to gregor mendel uh, all of these traits that we are seeing are controlled by one gene so one gene controls one trait but actually nowadays it is seen that there should be multiple genes there there can be multiple genes which are controlling one single trait for example uh, say uh, so in case of gregor mendel one gene controls one trait but nowadays research proved all these things that there should be more than one so multiple gene are controlling one trait now examples are given the examples for the one gene controlling one trait is the again the flower color say in case of pea plant uh, which uh, the gregor mendel have worked with now in case of multiple genes controlling one trait is the skin color of us so human skin color is an example and also height human height also and in fact most of the eukaryotic or higher eukaryotic uh, organism traits are controlled by multiple genes they are not controlled by one gene they are controlled by multiple different different genes okay so now let us talk about so actually the inheritance pattern of multiple uh, genes are completely different than those that those of this gene for example in this case suggests us that let's find that if three genes are controlling one particular trait suppose in case of our in case of our skin color or say in case of our height let's say in case of our height now height is also regulated by multiple genes it is not three or four genes there are more and many more genes but let's consider for our understanding sake that this is controlled our height is controlled by three genes and those genes are a b and c so they are a b and c now each of the gene will be present in two versions two copies so the versions are also be called uh, the alleles so here are also say a a b b c c is there and also this all of them are in capital that means these are dominant in the trait so recessive are a a b b c c this is a recessive trait right okay now let's say if this is a male this is female so they have mate with each other after that what will be the offspring so this is going to be in case of our understanding in previous case that we have discussed about the dihybrid and trihybrid tetrahybrid cross the inheritance square is going to be like the trihybrid cross but actually this is not trihybrid because trihybrid means involving three traits but here we are involving only one trait three different genes now this is not tri hybrid cross so please this is very important don't confuse it with tri hybrid cross but the inheritance pattern is more like tri hybrid cross so what we are going to have what we are going to get from this cross let's find out now if we make a cross of it what is going to be in tri hybrid cross the total number of offspring they are going to have is 64 right because there are 3 and the combinations are 8 so 8 to the power 3 is 64 combinations of different gamete formation right and so this is 
difficult to do a Punnett square of the 64 but we know the probability rule and using probability rule what, what we can get is that for example say here from here what we can get we can get a b c from here we can get a b c this is the dominant and this is the recessive trait right now those persons which are having this a b small a b c gene will be of least height those persons are having the caps a b c will be of tallest height so higher place so the tallest so this is giving us the phenotype tallest this is giving us shortest of height and in mendelian pattern there are two different phenotypic expression either uh, so it's a one on none event right but in this case this is not one on none if it is one it is zero then there are many more intermediate things that can give rise due to the combination of all these things what kind of combinations that we can find we can find caps a caps b cap c which is this one then caps a small b so say caps a caps b small c caps a caps so we fix this caps so caps a caps b caps c caps a caps b small c caps a uh, so sorry sir so say the combinations caps a caps b caps c then caps a small b small c caps a caps b small c then say caps a small b cap c okay then say caps so a 4a are there so now small a caps b cap c small a caps b small c small a small b cap c small a small b small c so we are having eight different combinations one two three four five six seven eight right so these are the eight different combinations that are possible from the crossing between them so the gametes that are formed are of these eight different combinations so we are having eight at the top remember if we draw that uh, that Punnett square eight will be here eight will be here so total 64 of combinations and from then we can get this kind of results where we can find whether they are going to be small, shortest and tallest now what is going to be uh, to get so by looking at it what we can find a simple pattern now what is going to be the pattern we can see and this is the expression pattern of this polygenic inheritance is that the terminal lines so caps abc now if so let us let us draw let us draw the punnett square it will be easier for you if i draw the punnett square so let us draw where i can draw the punnett square here say okay Okay, so let's draw the Punnett square. I won't draw the Punnett square. Instead, what we'll do, we will make uh, the combination of that. We'll be making uh, the probability. We'll be using probability to figure it out. So let's figure it out. So we are having caps A, caps B, caps C fall from there. So if I going to get uh, this, or let's <laughs> let's draw it. It will be better if I draw the Punnett square. Okay, so I'm erasing this part. We have talked about it. Now let's draw the Punnett square from here. So we are having this. Let's draw it. So say this is here, and say another is. A B C A B C A B C A B C A B C A B C A B C A B C so <laughs> okay I hope I need to rub that too
okay so let's rub it okay now say here in this Punnett square what we are going to have this is a huge Punnett square you can see now let's consider a a sorry a a b b c c then say caps a caps a caps b small b caps c small c say caps a caps a caps b caps b caps c small c a a b b small caps c caps a a b b c c now uh, i am drawing all this punnett square for you and after that we will be focusing on the video and finding the results so pause for a moment okay friends let's resume back now you can look at it how difficult it is and tedious it is to draw i have taken uh, 10 or to 12 minutes to draw all these things and this is really puzzling now you can find the cross now what i am meaning that this part and this part it is crossed in this way okay so these are the gametes and these are the zygotes that are going to form one for male one for female so say this is for male this is for female and you cross this to get this thing so this is the punish square literally now from this punish square what is the actual goal of making this to tell you that how much difficult this polygenic inheritance really is now in this polygenic inheritance one thing you can see that this region this small a small a small b small b small c small c and cap c cap c cap z cap z cap small cap c cap c so these two characters are absolute so this all caps are the dominant trait which is giving us the phenotype of the tallest and this is giving us the shortest phenotype and this is also the terminal so these two are the terminal and the ratio of having these two is one out of 64 so this is the 64 combinations and having all of them is one out of 64 in all these directions okay except for that what we are having we are having several intermediate traits for example say caps a small a caps b small b caps c small c this trait as you can see this is one okay so this is one and let's find out yes uh, caps a small a caps b small b so the heterozygous state trait for all will be any other place let's find it out no no yes this one second then say in this part this one and say this one so I'm going to cross those ones so this one this one this one and say this one and this one this one most of them okay Okay, so you can find that this caps a small a, caps b small b, and caps c small c, this particular trait are also repeating most of the time. So the most common trait of all is caps a small a, caps b small b, and caps c small c. Okay, so just try to write it down caps a small a, caps b small b, and caps c small c. This is the most common, and these are the least. So caps say all caps and all small are the least. So you can see the population 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and I hope there are more. Anyways, so rest of the part we won't require because we don't need them for the understanding of polygenic inheritance. But we need is this. The two terminal values are hitting us the least time. And this heterozygous value, a small a small b, uh, small a small a, caps a small a, caps a small a, caps b small b, and caps c small c. This is giving us the highest time. Now, from that, what we can achieve, we can achieve that. So, so let me erase this and let's talk about uh, what we mean by this pattern. Okay, so actually what we get here, so let me erase a little bit amount of region and discuss one thing, that we are having two terminal values, this one,
this one both of them are terminal and we also have this one this three value are more important other than that we are we are having different values like this values like this many more values are there and we are having different probability of giving hitting on to them but we wa we are not bothering about them at all we are bothering about this three values so we are having 1 out of 64 1 out of 64 and this is pretty high so 8 out of 64 or 8 to 10 if we find now that suggests us something very important and what is that important thing this is giving us a typical typical graph if we plot the finding onto a graph for this polygenic inheritance now if we place a graph for example say if we place a graph here like that and if we look at height here so height here say a b c to small a small small b small c level like that so the highest height to the least height then what we can get the number of organisms number of members in this y axis and the x axis will be the height then what we can get here we can have so remember all the caps are the least so these are the least amount will be plotted and the most is the middle one which is this one right remember so this terminal values let me take it other color the terminal values here this one and this one those are least and this value is the highest and all the rest of the part which are like this this and all the rest part which we haven't talked about they will be having somewhere middle values so what we can get if we draw a graph we can have a bell shaped curve now this bell shaped curve is a characteristic curve for a polygenic inheritance all the time this bell shaped curve is telling us a polygenic inheritance and the pattern they are going to give us is also of the polygenic type it is having the ratio of like that if we cross if, if, if there are 16 people the ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 2 is to 1 like that okay so sorry not excuse me not not this so in this case what we are getting so the terminal values will be less and the intermediate value will be the highest this is the pattern of polygenic inheritance now we have also discussed about evolution and you remember this kind of same graph we can find in case of the stabilizing natural selection where we can find the intermediate mean is to be the highest so here in this kind of pattern the mean value is giving us the median value so sorry not median the mean value not uh, actually not median the mean value is giving us the mode of so if we are considering the mean median and mode so here is the mean value is giving us the mode that is repeated the most of the time and that is the mean value in this case so here the mean value is the mode value in case of this polygenic inheritance and if you don't know what is the mean value and mode value mean value is you know arithmetic mean so uh, include all of them and divide it two you get the mean mode value means the highest number mean this is not a mean value that means the mean position so here is the mean is this because this is the uh, average of all of this all these two this is the average so this average will accompany it with this mode value mode means then those particular frequency which is present in the most abundant time okay so it is having similar in case of this polygenic inheritance now this polygenic inheritance is this type of graph is true for uh, the skin color of ours uh, the height of ours and also many more different traits that human being are possessing okay so so we have discussed about this and in the next video we'll be talking about other type of non mendelian inheritance thank you